Following the defeat of the Empire at the Battle of Jakku, the New Republic became a powerhouse that worked tirelessly to promote prosperity across the galaxy. Despite this, we know that numerous Imperial holdouts survived years in what was an occupied galaxy. So why exactly was this, and how were the Imperial remnants able to run rings around the New Republic for years after its apparent defeat and surrender? Now, in this video, we are, of course, going to be talking about people such as Moff Gideon, who was operating in the known galaxy four years after the Empire's surrender. But we also need to consider the countless other holdouts, such as the fuel refinery on Morak, or Magistrate Ellsberth on Corvus. The Mandalorian really did highlight that there was still a lot of Imperials doing nefarious acts around the galaxy. It really seems like the Imperials were pretty much safe, and we don't really see the New Republic doing anything about them. We assume that it was efforts made by the New Republic to find Imperial holdouts, however, they clearly weren't very successful. So firstly, and possibly most obviously, we have the fact that arguably it was more trouble than it was worth. To most senators in the New Republic, they were busy rebuilding their economies following the war, to really care about Imperials who were hiding out. After all, their fleets and super weapons had gone along with their armies, and most importantly, their emperor. They were just a few lost sycophants. No better than pirates or criminals at this point. We also need to remember, as I say in a lot of these videos, is that the galaxy is very large. As we know, the New Republic by 9 ABY at least had not managed yet to tame the Outer Rim. Simply put, the Outer Rim is generally the least valuable part of the galaxy. Everything is incredibly spaced out, and there's a lot more dangers. All in all, holding the Outer Rim is just a relatively bleak task that no one wants. Unfortunately, the New Republic government, like the Republic before it, was pretty lazy. It would rather focus on building up the profitable and densely populated core and mid-rim worlds. That's where the action was, if you will. For this reason, what was happening in the Outer Rim just didn't interest a lot of people. It's also important to remember that the fall of the Empire had created a great deal of newer enemies for the New Republic to deal with. The war will have led to huge surges in crime, with crime syndicates and pirates and other gangs grasping for power in the vacuum left by the Empire. And for the galactic government, it was probably more important to quell these galactic crime lords, say spice smugglers, than a few autocrats hiding out in the middle of nowhere. There's also a great deal of internal political strife in the New Republic that we don't normally talk about that much. For the first time in two decades, people had political freedom. The galaxy again became a melting pot of different ideals, unlike when it was under the sole rule of Palpatine. And this, like it or not, comes with dangers. The senators and the politicians were likely very concerned with politics above anything else. They didn't want those with opposing political ideals to take power and therefore internal power struggles and bureaucracy will have been ever present. It's always the biggest criticism of the Republic or New Republic in Star Wars, and that's just that at the end of the day, it moves slowly, it's bureaucratic, and a lot of the time the people in charge don't have the right intentions or priorities at heart. However, the final and possibly the most important point is that the New Republic could just not manage it. We've talked about this on a previous video when we discussed why the New Republic chose to use droids. You see, the Galactic Concordance wasn't only the end of the Empire, but it was also the end of the Rebellion. The New Republic made peace a priority. It disarmed itself tremendously, and that doesn't just mean their warships and blasters got decommissioned, but a huge portion of its military staff were largely ostracised. At the end of the day, the New Republic had to see itself as legitimate, and putting rebels who could have committed countless crimes of varying severity into positions of power just would do nothing to strengthen this claim. We've talked about this before when we say that the Rebel Alliance lacked a very strong command structure, being made up of countless different cells. For this reason, there was a lot of rebels out there who did some pretty bad stuff, and to put it mildly, the New Republic wanted nothing to do with them. They wanted a clean slate. And this is a problem, because majority of the New Republic's military during the Galactic Civil War was Rebel Alliance members. 
effectively the New Republic told their army to go home and that they weren't needed or particularly wanted anymore. The war was over, droids would take on security roles, but they no longer needed an army. Now, most people will always argue that this was maybe done a little bit too ambitiously and a bit too quickly by the New Republic. Realistically, for their new government to really take power and really maintain order, peace and prosperity, their military would have probably been quite useful. At the end of the day, the thing is that the reason the rebellion was successful was because of these people. The Empire wasn't overthrown by procedure or conformity or wealth. It was spontaneous acts of heroism. It was people. The people who were now in charge of bringing these Imperials to justice weren't these soldiers. They were likely people who'd never fought the Empire. Majority of them were bureaucrats who would have just have likely worked with the Empire when it was in power, as opposed to work with the New Republic now. At the end of the day, the people who would have been effective at stopping the Imperial Remnants were basically shut out. They were blacklisted from anything to do with the New Republic. And this is ultimately one of the biggest reasons why the First Order managed to steamroll through the galaxy. The New Republic just wasn't really capable, or willing even, to defend itself. The Imperial Remnants were just the first drops of rain of the coming storm. But what do you guys think? Why were the Imperial Remnants able to operate and survive for so long in the New Republic's territory without them doing really anything to intervene? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, please remember to like, share and sub as it is really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy and tick the bell to get regular updates. But most importantly, thank you so, so much for watching this video today. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you're all having a great day. I hope you're all staying safe and I'll see you next time.